Shatanat, Psalm 105. So I'm going to start with a story, a uh, maple story. Um, my son used to play this, so I assume many of you have also. Um, and the reason why I start with this story is to tell a story. And the story has to do with uh, the company that actually makes this game. Next on, yeah. Um, and one of the executive's daughter made the news in Korea a few days ago. And her name is Sarah Kim. No, she did not. I don't, as far as I know, she didn't play Maple Story. But um, the news article that popped up a few days ago said that uh, she is a student at. Thomas Jefferson uh, High School in Virginia, which is a very well-known uh, school, uh, almost as good as International Academy. And um, she got accepted to uh, both Harvard and Stanford uh, and MIT, decided to go, couldn't decide between uh, Stanford or MIT or, or uh, Stanford or Harvard, so she decided uh, or the two schools got together and figured out a way so that she can actually attend um, Stanford for the first two years, and then she would move over to Harvard for the, uh, the next two and finish her degree. <clears throat> and uh, a bunch of you know, things about how you know, all the accomplishments that uh, uh, she was able to uh, uh, do during his high school, uh, her high school years. Um, and... She was even interviewed on the news in Korea, um, and if you can read the Korean there, um, it actually says even Mark Zuckerberg was impressed uh, with her, uh, this math pro prodigy, and uh, she, I guess, had a phone call with him and talking about you know, how he was impressed and you know, he wanted her to eventually come work with her and such. So that was, I think I saw that maybe six days ago, five days ago. Well then, a couple of days ago, then I saw another article regarding this, and it turns out all lies. Everything was a lie. She never got accepted to Harvard or Stanford, and she's not going to be attending either schools. Some of the accomplishments that she had made, uh, that she claimed, uh, like being a math finalist for a uh, math competition, never happened. She had presented evidence uh, such as acceptance letters from these schools even, but it turns out they're a forgery. The schools themselves said that, oh no, never happened. She claimed a, a GPA of 4.6, and it turns out the highest GPA, uh, or the, the number one student in her high school GPA was 4.57. So, unlikely. So, all these lies that she made up. So, I, I was, I mean, I was honestly really impressed, and, and I was so happy for her. You know, when I first saw the news, I thought, wow, that's, that's really awesome. You know? But then, obviously heartbroken that it wasn't really true. Now, lies. I guess we lie all the time these days. Maybe not to the extent of what she did. But uh, I guess it starts when we're young, because, you know, your parents are going to tell you lies, essentially. I'm sorry if you thought the tooth fairy was still uh, real. Sorry, it's not. Uh, yeah, sorry. There it is, the point. The money is really from your parents. Yeah. Um, but the Bible clearly tells you that in Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4, do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you'll find favor and good repute in the sight of God and men. So clearly, truth is very important in the Bible. And I've mentioned a few times how, as I'm taking classes in seminary, they talk a lot about the truth that are in the Bible, how it's so important. And 
you know, some, why do we lie? Well, sometimes lying will get us things. Um, you know, maybe some financial gains. On Wednesday, we talked a little bit during Bible study about this hypothetical situation of a, uh, uh, a computer engineer who had to come up with, uh, who had to misrepresent, basically, and lie about a product that he was developing. And they wanted to create an ad that said it was better than the iPad when it really wasn't. They were making a tablet. And so the question that was posed to the group was, would you go ahead and make the ad, you know, do the ad, and, and lie about it, or are you going to stick to saying only the truth and not do it, uh, and risk potentially being fired, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, the Bible also tells you in Proverbs 22.1, choose a good reputation over great riches, for being held in high esteem is better than having silver or gold. So, Good reputation is better than riches. Now, there, there are various different kinds of lies, and you know, I try not to lie, you know, and I'd be lying if I said I do not lie, period. Because uh, we have this, you know, white lies, and we talked about this extensively on Wednesday as well. So, uh, what are white lies? Google tells us that it's a harmless or a trivial lie, especially one told to avoid hurting someone's feelings. And I'm sure we all do it. Um, I'm sure I've told white lies to my wife many, many times, and I'm sure the husbands in the audience have done that. It's, it's a must, almost, to survive in a marriage. Um, and maybe some of you have heard this white lie. Really like you, as a friend. Right? I don't know who that is, but it just on that. <laughs> um, I, I did, <laughs> I was going to go with a, I did find a uh, One Direction reference, but the, the lyrics wasn't quite appropriate, <laughs> so I decided instead to go Spanish, and after all, we are going to go to Ecuador. Um, mintiendo is uh, lying. It, meant, it comes from the verb mentir. Uh, if you can translate that, wonderful. You can teach us Spanish for our Mission trip. Um, Austin O'Malley, who's a professor, who was a professor at uh, Notre Dame, said that those who think that it is permissible to tell white lies soon grow colorblind. Now we say it's white lies because, as opposed to black lies, I guess, and and the term white lies, I guess, started in the 1700s, and you know, white being good, black being bad, and we say white lies. Well, that's a good thing. You know, it's, we're, we're trying to make the other person feel better, uh, etc. And uh, like I said, sometimes maybe it is necessary to kind of make sure the relationship, whether it's with your wife or with your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your parents, even. Yeah, mom, I got the homework done. Yeah. But Ben Franklin said, honesty is the best policy. And I suppose that's debatable, but he, he said that. Uh, there was another old guy that has a story about telling the truth. George Washington, yes, very good. Um, the, the little boy is George Washington. Um, so the story goes, uh, when George Washington was a little boy, their parents gave him as a present an axe. I don't know why. You would give a kid an axe for a present, but it was a very shiny and you know sharp. So he went around chopping things, you know, here and there, little you know bushes and stuff like that. Then he comes across this cherry tree, his father's favorite cherry tree, and he says, "Hmm, cherry tree, axe. Let's see what happens." So he starts chopping, chopping, and eventually, as the picture shows, it fell. Now the father eventually, uh, you know saw the tree uh, that's been chopped, chopped down, and he asked, who did this? And again, according to the legend, and you know, there's debate as to whether this really happened or not, I know, but um, it's, uh, supposedly George Washington said, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little hatchet. So little George Washington, being honest, even from that age, and of course, he went on to do great things. Now, mind you, politicians, I think part of the job requirement is to lie, but that's a different story. 
I started out with uh, the title, God Cannot. And we know God to be omnipotent, which means he is capable of anything. He is almighty, all-powerful. But he can't do certain things because it goes against his nature. It goes against who he is. He go it goes against his holiness. And the full image of that at the beginning is that God cannot lie. There are a few other things that God cannot do, actually. Um, Again, because it goes against his nature. But one of the things uh, in, that's mentioned in Titus 1-2, the full verse goes like this, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began, is in Titus 1-2. So, God cannot lie. C.S. Lewis tells us, C.S. Lewis, the the, the person behind the Chronicles of Narnia. <clears throat> um, God can't give us peace and happiness apart from himself because there's no such thing. So God cannot give you peace and happiness unless it is from him. You might think that you can get peace and happiness from the world, and the world will tell you that constantly. You can lie a little about it so that you can be peaceful and happy. But true peace and happiness can only come from God. Now, another thing that God cannot do is break promises. In Judges 2.1, says, I will never break my covenant with you. Covenant is just a fancy word for promise. Right? And he'll never break his promises with you, with us. Right? And he's made, throughout the Bible, lots of covenants with people in the Bible. He made the covenant with Adam, made a covenant with Abraham, Noah, etc., etc. And it tells us in Psalm 105, that is the verse that was read this uh, earlier, where the Lord is good and his love endures forever, his faithfulness continues all through all generations. So not just in the time of Adam and Abraham and Noah that was in the, in the Old Testament, but also through all generations down to where we are now. And what promises has he made? Well, there are lots of promises that are, again, in the Bible that applies to us. But of course, the one that is probably the most important that we've seen many times is this one, John 3.16. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God is making a covenant with you to give you everlasting life. Right? And the only thing that is required is that you believe in him, him being Jesus Christ. And think about what he did on the cross. So, although God cannot lie, right? And there, like I said, there are lots of many things that he cannot do. The thing that he does for sure is make promises with you. Okay? And he will not break that promise. Unlike the people of the world that will lie a little bit here and there, break promises, make promises. Right? So we can hold on to the fact that God, who made this promise with you to give you everlasting life, will not break it. So the only thing that is required of us is to just believe that promise. Okay. When you make a covenant in the Old Testament days, they will take an animal and they'll chop it in half. Okay. And then you would walk in between. Which signifies that if I am to break this promise with you, you know, if, if you made a promise with a, per, a particular person, then this is what you can do to me. You can chop me in half, split me open. Old Testament, you know, some gruesome people there. But, um, and of course, we, we, don't, we don't have to do that. But the thing to note is, um, you know, we no longer have to worry about things like that. We have Jesus Christ, and in him is the promise that God has made to us, this covenant that is made to us that gives us everlasting life. Ben or somebody, come on up. 
So I would like you guys to think about all the lies that are in this world. The world will tell you lots of different lies. We tell lies ourselves. Right? Now we can choose to continue to do so, live as the world lives, and it will give us some benefits, typically just temporary, maybe some financial gains. In that hypothetical case of the computer engineer, um, we're saying, okay, maybe he can make 50% you know, increase in his salary. That, that, that's awesome. Um, I've never gotten a 50% raise, ever. But is it really worth risking your reputation for? And again, the Bible said that reputation is more important than riches. So, it's then just playing some, play something in the background. Uh, let's confess that we lie. And it's almost become a habit. And the world will tell you, it's okay. Everyone does it. White lies. It's, it's supposed to, you know, you, you do it so that the other person doesn't feel bad. Your breath stinks. Here's a piece of gum. But honesty can hurt. Yeah. But as we talked about on Wednesday for Bible study, it's out of love that you give that piece of gum. Okay. If you didn't give the piece of gum, then, <laughs> then, you know, you got issues, maybe. So, like I said, let us come before God and confess that we, we lie all too often. And especially when it comes to our relationship with God. What lies have you been telling God? So let us confess everything that we have not been truthful with God about. Because, you know, He knows. He already knows. Even the white lies. Yes, it might make the other person feel a little better at the moment. But honesty with love <coughs> is the best policy. We mentioned the story of how the young rich man came to Jesus during a Wednesday Bible study. And when he asked what he had to do, Jesus, the Bible says, loved him and told him to go sell all your riches and follow me. Unfortunately, the young man couldn't do it. So sometimes honesty is not necessarily going to lead to what you necessarily want to happen. But with love, that is what the Bible tells us to do. And also let's remember the promises that God has made to us. So let's give thanks to God for all the promises that He has made and kept throughout generations. Especially the one promise that is making with you. Through John 3.16, but really the, the entire Bible through Jesus Christ, that you can have eternal life, everlasting life, by believing in Jesus Christ, believing that He died on the cross for you. And pray for the Holy Spirit so that we can be like God, where we cannot lie. Because we are to be holy, just like God is. Yes, we're human, so we fail at times, of course. But we try with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we confess that we lie all too often in this world full of deceit. Lord, help us as we live through this world that we can stay true And help us be free through the truth of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the covenant that you've made with us to give us everlasting life for our belief in Jesus Christ. 
And we are so thankful that you do not break promises. You keep your covenants, that you cannot lie. Pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.